This video is going to introduce you to the collisions and car crashing laboratory exercise. In the collisions and car crashing exercise, you're going to be carefully studying the collision between a cart and a bumper. So you'll be sending carts down inclined planes like this and observing the resulting collision with a motion detector. Let's have a look at the theory involved in this. So the first thing you're going to need to consider is conservation of momentum. So remember that momentum is conserved when there's no external forces acting on the body. Now in a collision, the exter any external forces that are acting are very tiny compared to the internal forces in that collision. So it is a proper assumption that momentum is conserved during a collision. So we can write the rule of conservation of momentum between two bodies as M1, U1, where M1 is the mass of the first body, U1 is the initial velocity of the first body, plus M2, U2 is equal to M1, V1, where V stands for the final velocity, plus M2, V2. Now these Vs are all vectors, so they do have a direction. And in this case, we're looking at the collision between a cart and a bumper. So initially, this bumper is stationary. So this is going to have no velocity. And as long as you've attached your bumper correctly to the track, after the collision, the bumper is still going to be stationary. And so this is going to be zero as well. So momentum should be conserved in your collision. Now, how about energy? Energy is conserved when no external forces do work on the body. So have a think about whether energy would be conserved in this collision. In this laboratory exercise, we're going to look at something more specifically. We're going to look at whether kinetic energy is conserved. So you'll be considering, is kinetic energy conserved? So the kinetic energy before the collision takes place is given by a half m1 v, uh, u1 squared plus a half m2 u2 squared. Again, the bump is stationary, so this term should be zero. And then after the collision, it's given by a half m1 v1 squared plus a half m2 v2 squared. And again, this term here should be zero. And so you'll do a few different collisions and you'll look at it for each of these collisions is kinetic energy conserved and depending on what your answer is you're going to be able to classify your collisions differently so if your answer is yes kinetic energy is conserved in that case we call this a perfectly elastic collision If the answer is no, it's not conserved, then that's going to be called an inelastic collision. And if the answer is no and the two bodies stick together, so in this case no and the cart is stuck to the bumper, then it's called a perfectly inelastic collision. No and they stick together. that will be called perfectly inelastic. So try and think of some examples of perfectly inelastic collisions. Now at the very start of this lab, you're going to need to derive an expression for something called the coefficient of restitution. You're going to need to show that this coefficient of restitution E is equal to minus V2 minus V1 over U2 minus u1. And then using this coefficient of restitution, we can determine, if we calculate this, we can determine what type of collision it is. So when kinetic energy is conserved, then since these are both zero in this case, we know that the initial and final velocity of the car have to be the same, which is going to give us an E of 1. 
if the coefficient of restitution is somewhere between 0 and 1, it's going to be an inelastic collision. And on the case where these two bodies stick together, then the difference between their final velocities is 0. And so we can see that E is going to be equal to 0 in the case of a perfectly inelastic collision. So at the start of the lab, you'll be deriving this. You'll be combining these two to show this relationship. You may want to have a bit of a try of that before coming to the lab. You can then ask your demonstrator about it if there's something you don't understand. So you'll be classifying a few collisions to start with. And then what you're going to start looking at is impulse. So impulse for a collision is equal to the force times the time. But the exciting thing is that this is also equal to the change in momentum. So that is equal to m v1 minus u1. So this would be the impulse felt by the cart if v1 is the final velocity of the cart and u1 is the initial velocity of the cart. So there's a nice relationship here between force time and change in velocity or change in momentum. So what you're going to do is you actually have an accelerometer on your cart. So you're going to be able to measure the acceleration of the cart. And then using Newton's second law, F equals m a, you'll actually know how much force that cart is experiencing. So you're going to use what's called a data logger to plot a graph of acceleration versus time. And for your collision, it should look something like this. You'll have a fairly constant acceleration as it's going down the slope. And then when it hits the end, you get a peak in the acceleration. And then it comes back up the slope and it's accelerating down the slope again. So this is t and this is acceleration. And we can work out the impulse from this graph for any period of time just by using impulse is equal to the force times the time. So that's just mass times the ex integral under the acceleration time graph. So if I wanted to get the impulse during the collision, I'd work out, well, what's that area under there? And that is going to be my impulse during the collision. Now, at the end of this lab exercise, you're going to think about passenger safety. And in order to passengers to be safe in the car, we want this force to be a minimum. We want our passengers to experience the least force they can. So you're going to need to think about what can you do to decrease this force. And you're going to need to set up your cart and your track so that this force is as low as possible, leaving your passengers safe. So you may want to have a think now about how can you decrease the force during a collision. Let's have a look now at the experimental setup for this experiment. Okay, so the equipment that you're going to need for this experiment is the track, which you want at a fairly low angle so that the cart does travel down the track, but so that when it hits the bumper at the end, the bumper doesn't move. If you do have problems with your bumper moving and the whole track shifting as the collision occurs, you can rest the bumper against the power, power rail on the experimental desk because this will stop this part moving and we need to assume this is stationary. So then in this experiment you're going to be using a data logger to collect the data and send it to the computer so that you can analyze it. So this is the lab pro. This lab pro needs three things to work. Firstly it needs power. So you've got a power cable. You should plug that into the power and then plug the other end into your data logger. The other thing it needs is to send the data to the computer. So you have a USB cable here which you're going to connect to the computer. So just be a bit careful with this one that you plug it in the right way around. Have a careful look at the shape of it and don't force it because the picture actually goes on the bottom, so that can be a bit confusing. So plug that into the little circuit with the out to computer symbol on it, and then you plug the other end into the USB port on the back of the computer. 
And then the third thing it needs to work is one or more sensors. The first sensor that we're going to use is a motion detector. So how this works is by detecting reflections of sound. So it actually sends out a little t and then it listens and when it hears the reflection of the t it, it records that and interprets that as motion. So it works out how long it takes the echoes to return and how this is changing. So this means that if there's people moving around or things moving around this detector, apart from the cart, while you're detecting it, you may get some spurious data. So just make sure that the desk is clear and that you only have the sensor pointed at your cart moving, not at the group next to you's cart moving, because that will mean that you don't get good results. So you also need to plug this into the Lab Pro. This says Digsonic, which is telling us which of these channels we need to plug it into. So you've got a series of channels called channels 1 to 4. You're not going to use those in this case. You're going to use the ones called Digsonic. You can plug it either into Digsonic 1 or Digsonic 2. So plug one end of this Digsonic cable into the sensor and plug the other end into your data logger. Always be gentle with your data logger. If you're forcing something, it means that you're not doing it correctly and you should stop because this equipment is quite expensive and you don't want to break it. So we then face our motion detector down the track, move stuff out of its way so that it's ready to collect. Now, for the collisions and car crashing experiment, there is a template on the computer. So you should have dragged a folder onto your desktop from your first year drive here and called it experiments. So open that folder and, and then you've got a set of Logger Pro experiments here. This is using the Logger Pro, so open that folder there. And we've got car crash experiment part one and car crash experiment part two. For now, we're doing car crash part one. And so this will bring up a series of three graphs showing the position, velocity, and acceleration of the cart. To get it to work, you just press this green play button in the top left-hand corner. Let go of your cart. And it'll collect the data about the collision. Once the collision's finished, you can either press stop or wait for it to stop. To see the graphs more clearly, you can press this A button up the top. This stands for auto scale, and this will blow up the data so that you can see it more clearly. So once you've collected this data, you're going to need to analyze it. There's instructions about how to do that in your lab manual. You need to read off the velocity before and after the collision. You'll repeat each collision three times, so release it down the track, collect the data, record the data in your lab manual. When you're doing the collision with the hard bumper, just turn the cart around. One side of the cart has magnets, which will give you a fairly elastic collision, and one part does not have magnets, which will give you a much more inelastic collision. And so the collision will be more like this. So that's the first part. In the second part of this experiment, you're going to be using the accelerometer to measure the acceleration of the cart down the track. So the accelerometer is connected to channel one in your Logger Pro. So just connect it into channel one and open car, part, car crash part two template on the computer. Now, before you start, you should check that this accelerometer is calibrated. So have a think, what should it read when it's pointing directly downwards? And look and see if that is what it reads. And then what should it read when it's pointing directly upwards? If it's not reading what it should be reading, you're going to need to calibrate it. So under the experiment heading, click on calibrate. And you can perform either a two-point calibration with up and down or a one-point calibration with it flat on your desk. If you need any help with that, speak to your demonstrator. Once you've calibrated it, 
you need to set it up to collect the data. So go to experiment and then go to data collection. And this is the screen that you use to, to fiddle with the settings. Now, what you want to do is take at least 200 measurements each second because the collision's fairly quick and you need to get the acceleration at each point during that collision. So we're going to change that to 200 samples per second and you either want to collect it for 5 or 10 seconds. I might set that to 10 now. Either is fine. So once you've changed that, click on done and we're ready to collect the data. So to collect the data, put the arrow on your accelerometer pointing down the cart so that it's going to crash into the end like that and attach it to the cart with a rubber band so that the accelerometer itself doesn't shift about during the collision. Once you're ready to collect data, press the green play button and then let the cart go down the track and you should see a collision somewhat like that. If your cart is going faster, you'll have a bigger spike there. You'll then want to analyze this to record in your lab manual what you need to record. So there's some tools in the Logger Pro software that can help you. You've got a tool up here which shows you the area under the curve. So you can just highlight parts of your graph and then use this. That may be useful. You've also got this um, statistics one which will tell you things like the maximum value and the minimum value. So you'll probably find that tool also very helpful. So just follow the instructions in your lab manual and I hope you enjoy this experiment and work out how to make cars safer.